story we're talking about tonight is Pasadena is set to pass a law where they will tax streaming services. It's going to be they did something similar to this with the cable companies originally, and they tax them as a utility because as you can tax utilities. And they're saying they're losing a lot of tax revenue from people cutting the cords and going to these streaming services. And the, I'm it, not so happy with this. And I'm going to say, too, that reasoning is is kind of weird to me considering you know, cable is not – a necessity to begin with anyway, and it's not like everyone has cable. Exactly. Anyway, broadcast TV you don't get taxed on because it's broadcast. So why, how are they losing revenue? They're losing the revenue that they otherwise wouldn't have if people just didn't use cable, which for a long time they didn't until, you know, I think it's only been the last 20 years that cable's been as big as it is. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, the cable, yeah, that's true. Cable has not been, since the 90s, I want to say, cable really started taking off. Uh, but it, it really just feels like it's an encroachment almost on people's choice. You know, it's like, all right, so I don't want it to pay for cable because I don't need all that. I don't need all those channels. I just want to get this because this is simple, basic. I save money. And they're like, oh, you're saving money. Well, give us some of that money you're saving. Uh, now, the tax is supposed to be a 9.4% tax. What? Which is ridiculous. What? It's, it's bigger than the sales tax in most states, which is, is crazy. And now 40 other cities apparently in California already either have this on the books or they've been contemplating this legislation. But this is not the first place. Chicago already has this in place. It was actually the first major city in America to do it. 9% tax. Pennsylvania, it's a 6% tax. I mean, this is ridiculous. Again, how are you going to penalize people for wanting to save money and streamline things? You know, I mean, you can you can tax the Internet. Now, the big thing is the federal government might actually what I've been hearing might actually step in on this, uh, especially the FCC, because the Internet is not considered a utility. So you cannot tax somebody. That's actually been a big uh, a non-utility thing. That's been a big uh, debate back and forth lately, too, though, is um, people want to classify it as a as a utility to a degree. But. It hasn't. It hasn't passed. And this, I guess, would be one of those cons of it being utility if they can tax it if it's a utility. Yeah, and I just, you know, I, I look at the Internet as such a great thing. It's a way to bring education to everybody. And all I see you doing when you say, oh, it's utility, tax it, is taking it away from some people. Because I'm not saying 9% is going to make it so cost prohibitive that you're not going to be able to go out and get it. But it could mean a difference between some people who are a little less fortunate being able to get a good internet package or just getting the bare minimum. You know, okay. that $10, $15 a month could be the world to some of these people. It could be the difference between you being able to watch this video, stream it straight through, or have to wait 15 minutes for it to buffer. Yeah. It really can add up. And if you think about it, you're, you're hurting people in the worst way because you're preventing them from getting and education. Internet, in my mind, the greatest thing about it is the spread of information. What are you doing? You're restricting that spread of information when you do something like this. Now, I know we're talking about streaming services, but it's not a very far jump. Once you classify streaming services as being a utility or something like that, then you classify the internet where it comes from as a utility, and then boom, now we have taxes, regulations on it that we don't need, and it really, it's a slippery slope. I, I'm not be like Armageddon's happening. Oh no! But it's it's not too far. Yeah, and I would say something you bring up that I hadn't really thought of is where do you draw the line of what's considered a streaming service now? Because we're thinking, of course, Netflix, Amazon Prime Ooh, Video, yeah. and Hulu. However, YouTube. yeah, what about YouTube, where mm -hmm. you can get a lot of educational things? What about actual like? educational uh, services that you streaming to deliver classes, for instance. Uh, where where do you draw that line? There's all kinds of streaming services now that utilize streaming. I'm sure right now they have it classified in such a way that hopefully, it, I guess hopefully only go, applies to the things that we would uh, obviously think of, but it's not going to be that long until yeah. maybe someone brings up, hey, why don't we expand it? Or even some of those companies might say, why are we being penalized when we have material and everyone else isn't being penalized that has similar well, I mean, if you, Yeah, even if you're right, they, even if they make a different distinction, oh, if it has any educational content in it, then we won't tax it. 
well, I mean, theoretically, Netflix, the kids stuff, that's some education content. I watch All a lot of documentaries. documentaries on yeah. That is education, you know, and and then you're right. And then what about YouTube, who has the YouTube red now where you can pay for stuff? Uh, where does that draw the line? So, OK, well, YouTube has a pay part of it. So now we're going to consider that part of the utility. So even if you're free, you owe us a tax. Like what? Like and how do you govern this without putting this crazy government oversight over everything? I just I think they're missing the point on what the Internet's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a way of breaking down barriers, making stuff available to everybody. And they're kind of putting those barriers back up yeah. is kind of how I see this. law. Of course, I, I wonder why this whether it has been challenged yet. For just sure the nature of um, of uh, cross state commerce, which, like you were saying, the FCC might stop this because this it's not like I guess there are servers like Netflix servers, and Amazon Prime, Amazon servers in California, but they're not everywhere. Yeah, and but a lot does of that mean California gets to collect tax on me here on the East Coast because their servers over there, and I use the service? Like exactly, like this has come up too with uh, with commerce from online companies recently and some places have decided oh we can we can now put sales tax on it some places um have not it's a question in the but it does put it again in the realm of does the federal government step in and say you can't do this because now you're taxing interstate commerce which is yeah and then i don't like that either because i don't like super government oversight on things you know it, it's it's a bad, it's it's a bad situation. Alone. Yeah. Alone. Let me have my internet and streaming services. I paid $10 a month for that stuff. Actually, 12 because now we have four screens. If you have a big family and you share your password, get four screens. It's only like $2 more. It's well worth it. Just just a tip. But if you charge me more tax on that, I'm going to be bitter. Yeah. Yeah. All you know what? Around. I'm going to go down to the SEC building tomorrow. I can do that. I don't live too far away from it. And I'm going to have a talk with them. All That's right. what I'm going to do. So hit me up. Let me know in comments down below. What do you want me to say to the FCC when I knock on their door? Before or after they throw me out, you can pick. But uh, I will get thrown out. Uh, so, <laughs> so but Brian, we'll, we'll go down again with your questions as they come with, in. With your comment, yes, yes. So hit us in the comments down below, of course, at Words From My Face on Twitter, Google Plus, Facebook. Oh, always getting a hold of us. But let's keep on a roll.